Hi, everyone. We're here today because you clearly applied for the Rhodes Scholarship, and now you're thinking about the next steps. Uh, we're here to share our reflections, to share our journeys in hopes that we can help you navigate that process of interviews and, uh, you know, going through that entire process. And we hope that this is a helpful conversation for you. Um, so we, I do have some panelists here with me. And to begin with, I'll ask them to introduce themselves. My name is Khansa. I'm from Pakistan, um, 2021 scholar, pursuing the MPhil in Development Studies. Uh, Munib? Hi, everyone. My name is Munib. I am a Rhodes Scholar from the class of 2020 um, and from the UAE constituency. I'm based at Jesus College doing a DFO in engineering science. Um, I came here a while ago in 2020, started with a master's in computer science, and my work is mostly in AI and healthcare. Uh, I'll pass, pass it on to Serene. Hi, everyone. My name is Serene Singh. I'm from Colorado in the United States. I am currently doing my DPhil, aka PhD in Criminology and Criminal Justice, and I'm at Christchurch College as a student, and I'm a staff member at St. Peter's College. I also did my master's in public policy at the Blavatnik School of Government here in Oxford, starting in 2019. So exciting uh, to be on this panel today. And let's I'm going to pass it on to Lillian. Hello, everyone. My name is Lillian Yusadi, and I'm from the class of 2021. I'm from the New Jersey constituency and I'm in Modlin College. <clears throat> um, I'm doing an MSc by research in engineering science. So similar in concept to what Manip is doing. He's doing a DPhil engineering science, but I'm doing a smaller version of it. So it's only two years long. And I'm specifically studying acoustics. So that's the study of sound waves. I'm gonna pass it off to Ritika. Hi everyone, I'm Ritika Mukherjee, a 2022 scholar from India. Uh, I am at St. John's College. I am studying a master's plus DPhil. It's a four-year program altogether in neuroscience, and my research is on sleep and hibernation in animals. Thank you. So when you guys sent in your applications, of course, most of us don't really expect anything to come of it. And it's, you know, it's sent, it's gone, we start doing other things in life. And then you suddenly get this interview call. Um, so what was your experience or what was your reaction when you got the interview call? And then how did you prepare for it? And how would you recommend people prepare for it? Uh, I mean, I remember um, when I got my interview call, I was like, oh, this is getting a little serious. You know, um, this is what I need to start taking it seriously, I guess. Um, and I think I prepared for it by going through my application again, by reading through my own materials. Um, and by thinking about my motivations and sort of just the things that I'd written in my application, but like going beyond that and thinking about what I wanted to do with those, um, I prepared by getting my friends to, you know, sort of um, imagine that they were in the Rhodes community and just asking me random questions about uh, life. And, you know, my friends really laughed at that um, and they enjoyed the process of grilling me. Um, so what was it like for you guys, uh, Munib? Yeah, absolutely, Kansa. I think that's great advice. And I um, and I definitely agree. I think for me, the mock interview that I set up with my friends was very useful. And I will say it was harder than the real roads interview. Um, it was great. truly, I mean, they knew all the weaknesses. They knew all the weak spots. Um, but it was very good preparation. I think also... Um, I talked to a lot of professors, um, especially previous Rhodes Scholars that were in my uni, to kind of about their experiences, talking about my application, um, trying to um, be more comfortable sharing my narrative, sharing my story, and kind of um, how does it connect to what I want to do later. And kind of the more you talk about it with uh, more senior academics, you become more comfortable um, and more prepared for sharing it with the committee later on, because you have never probably met these people before. Um, but yeah, uh, Ritika, what do you think? Yes, I completely agree. Uh, another thing I found to be helpful was talking to people who were not in the same academic discipline as I was, because uh, we tend to use a lot of jargon that people from the same academic community understand, but more often than not, most of the panelists on the interviews are not scientists or are not from your background. And it's very important to be able to uh, frame your work or your aspirations in a manner that is understandable to them 
and um, seems relevant to them. And um, like we discussed earlier, it's very important to present a big picture and uh, talk a lot about the implications of the work that you want to do as well as the nitty gritties of it. But I think it's very important to first present the implications and the big picture surrounding it. That um, knowing that beforehand really helped me um, go through all the interviews. Uh, what do you think, uh, Lillian? Um, similar to what when you, I got my parents to try to interview me. Um, maybe similar to you with your friends, no, uh, no generosity with them saying that was so bad, <laughs> or you know that was not well thought through response. And then I would say I actually went through similar to you, Kansa, and I just looked through my entire application and kind of like double spaced everything. And then I took down, a, like, took a pencil, and I just thought about, okay, if I didn't know myself, how would I, like, what would I think when I'm reading this? And so I kind of conducted a self-interview, which sounds a bit metaphysical, but, you know, I went through, and I was like, okay, if someone asked me about this, what, or if I read an application like this, what would someone be questioning me about? And it's like, well, if someone asked me this question, how would I respond? And so this can take like hours, but it really helped me a lot because at that point, now I had gone through my entire interview. So all the content that you basically provide the committee, um, you kind of know, uh, what people could ask you. And a lot of the questions that they ask aren't out of uh, left field. In fact, though, some of the questions that do come out of left field are probably even maybe the most interesting ones because uh, what you're saying is just off the cuff. Um, and I'm not saying like you should practice responses. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying have a general feel of the kind of the image and the story that you want to tell. Um, and so you're able to articulate yourself in the best way possible. Serene, do you feel, I don't know if you did a similar thing. Totally. I think it's very interesting, Lillian, because our approaches were almost complementary to each other. I am a public speaking teacher by profession. So my favorite thing to do when it comes to students is helping them get across what their words on paper say in a verbal sense. But what was really interesting is when I was preparing for interview, I recognized that it was very difficult as for, for myself to make sure that what my story was, right? Like you're wrapping up 20 years of life in a couple of papers and you have to get that across to a panel of judges in 15 minutes, less than that. So it's a very difficult task, but, um, and also you're, it's a task, as Lillian mentioned, that you don't know what kind of questions you're gonna get. So you might wanna focus on this part of your story, but you might not get the opportunity to do that. So the, the approach that I really took was allowing myself to hear myself speak in as many ways and formats as I could. I have like video vlogs of myself talking to myself. I have random podcasts that I was recording for and listening to like, oh yeah, I love when you emphasize that word. That was like powerful. And that was really helpful for me because at, at the point that you are in, in selected for an interview, your, your written materials are where they're at. There's no changing them. There's no adjusting them. There's no editing them. What really is the crux and the importance of the interview is the opportunity to connect in person, you know, with the words and the body language and the tonality that you have. So focus in on, on that and allow that to, to highlight and showcase who you are in a way that your text could not have done. Yeah, so leverage your friends, leverage your family. Um, you know, get their advice, be your own best interviewer and your own best critic um, is sort of what I'm getting from everyone. So after all this preparation and self-reflection and metaphysical journeys, um, how was your interview actually like if you were to quickly like, summarize it or tell a story um, sort of to take us, give us a picture of that? Uh, for me, it was challenging because people were asking me questions about what I was passionate about but also from their own lenses. For instance, a lot of my work is on accessibility and disability rights. And then in my interview room, there were a lot of people who worked on science and economics and all of these things. And they were asking me about policies and stuff in their disciplines, but sort of the accessibility take on it. Um, and it really forced me to think about things in ways that I hadn't thought about them before and reflect on those and um, sort of 
try to be practical and explain my ideas and make sure that they were sort of translatable across backgrounds and across disciplines. Um, I remember like after my interview, my mom called me and asked me how it was. I said, I don't know, but I do know I had fun talking to people, you know, being the authentic version of myself. Like I remember I, I was sometimes very sassy, which I don't know if I recommend or not. But, you know, being your authentic self, I think, was the best part of my interview. Um, and just talking to people who were interested in listening to me and actually giving me advice during the interview of, like, what my future trajectory should look like. Um, what about you, Lydia? What was your experience like? I completely agree. I was afraid I was going to say my interview was fun and then everyone else would think that's very bizarre. But you said it before me, so I'm allowed to say that now. Um, I just like I I'm like here are these really like interesting smart people who are all very accomplished and they're asking me about myself um that's fun um I do remember at one point they asked me why do you want to move to England or what appeals to you about British culture and I just honestly was like oh I really like British bands and they're like oh what type of music you know um I th ultimately you should ultimately really focus on portraying your true self I think what helped me a lot and it seems like it helped you Kansa is just being more relaxed. Um, in previous mock interviews with people, I, I I was quite uptight and someone was like, you just need to just relax, just be yourself. And I was like, okay. And so initially, of course, when you start the interview, you're quite nervous, but I had to force myself to just pretend like I was talking to like my friends uh, or my parents or someone. Um, and that really helped a lot. Because at this point, it's out of your hands. You're yourself and you just want to show them who you are. And if they don't pick you, that's not a diss at you. It's just, it's just honestly, a lot of it's, it comes down to luck. Um, so you just want to just be yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the most important, being yourself, having fun, um, as nerdy as that sounds. Uh, what about you, Serene? Well, it's interesting because I'm not sure within this, uh, panel if I am one of uh, maybe maybe one of two people who had an in-person interview experience and I think yeah I think that's interesting because we probably had a different room you know feeling in the interview and what I do remember about my interview you know I was not expecting certain questions I was not expecting certain um, phrases or parts of my resume to be picked up on and that was really I think important and critical because all my preparation up until that point allowed me to be able to speak on my feet and to think about hmm, that is interesting why did I say that or what why does that speak to who I am in some way how does that contribute to me as a learner but what I will say too is the panelists are there us as panelists but also the panelists of your interview are there rooting for you they're not looking for reasons to unselect you. They're looking for reasons to select you. And so going in with that attitude and approach of, I don't have to prove myself, I can be myself is a really profound and important attitude to come in with. Um, rather than thinking it's a competition, it's me against everyone, allow yourself to just be who you are. And for me, that was actually very, I think, refreshing because I knew that if I left 100% of who I am on the table, for the panelists to identify and look through, whether or not I got the scholarship, I knew that I was being, it was going to be best for me because they know as former Rhodes Scholars, which you know many of the panelists are, they know what this experience is going to be like. They know the types of scholars that would appreciate this opportunity, that would thrive in a place like Oxford or in a place like the United Kingdom. And allowing that decision to be left in the people that have had that experience is a really wise thing to do. And so I was pretty comforted knowing that I left my authentic mark during the interview rather than trying to be someone I'm not and then ending up in a place or in a degree program or in a college that was never meant to, to be mine in the first place. Um, what about you, um, Ritika? What was your experience like? Yes, um, my experience was similar in some respects. The thing that really helped me during those interviews was to know like Serene said is that the panelists are actually rooting for me and so when I was faced with confrontational questions or questions that I didn't know the answers to I, it helped to take a moment take a few seconds to think about my answer frame a few points and then speak because as I said 
earlier um, the interviews are not very long so whatever you say is very precious and trying to frame it in a manner that can be remembered like putting it across in points instead of um, unorganized sentences uh, will help both you and the panelists. Secondly, um, it's completely fine if you do not know the answer to a question. The panelists mostly do not want to test you completely on your absolute knowledge, but they want to see how you think. So rather than having an absolute answer to a question, even if you tell them how you would approach the question and how you would go about thinking or looking for an answer, even that is fine. So in your preparation for the interview, it's you're not supposed to, or I would suggest that you do not keep reading for it or trying to uh, you know, mug up things till the very last day. It's completely fine to read um, up until maybe the penultimate day before the interview. But um, after that, you really need to sit down, relax, and at the end of the day, realize that it's a conversation about you and no one knows you better than yourself. So you have uh, an, an upper hand here. And uh, as long as you're relaxed and calm and uh, collect your thoughts, you will be fine. It's actually so empowering. Like nobody knows you better than you. Um, and even if something you say isn't how you wanted to phrase it or isn't the best that you could make it don't panic in the middle because honestly again they didn't know what you were going to say so what you said is the best that there is um that would have been said you know um munib any last reflections yeah i don't have much to add i think a lot of what was said i i share uh, i think for me my interview took place over two days and i think sometimes it varies between constituencies so the first day we had a social dinner um, before the interview the next day. And that was a really good opportunity to get to know uh, the, ju the jury panelists uh, quite intimately. There was a lot of jokes. There was a lot of um, kind of conversations. Uh, and I think it was a good way to break the ice and be more comfortable talking about um, lots of challenging topics the next day. Um, yeah, so I think I agree. I think the jurors are very conscious about making it as easy for you as possible to go through the process, but they will challenge you at the same time. So I think it strikes a very good balance of um, emotionally guiding you through it while challenging you, challenging you intellectually. Um, yeah. We hope that you got an opportunity to learn about people's experiences with the interview. Um, as you probably just heard, there is no right formula for the interview and there is no one style of interview everyone has their own experiences but what you can do is try to stay calm think about every question as they come um think about the interview as a conversation which you learn from um regardless of the outcome and reflect as much as you can try to present your authentic self forward um good luck and um we hope that this video gave you some guidance um and some opportunities to reflect